Alrighty, Josh Room from Eastwood Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk about morning sickness. Now, I'm not female, I don't have kids, so I can't really give you a 100% reason why this happens. I'm just going to give you my theory, my take on it based off the reading and research I've done by Dr. John Lee, MD, who's not alive anymore. He's wrote many books. You can check his, his uh, stuff out online. Dr. Batman Gilej in Your Body's Minis Cries for Water. And Generative Anatomy by the one and only Ray P. So my theory is this. The interesting thing is Dr. Batman Gilej talks about dehydration in this book, of course, because it's about water and how water can cure many things from joint pain to high blood pressure to high cholesterol to morning sickness to AIDS. You name it. He's kind of like the water doctor. So he talks about dehydration as the cause of morning sickness, which is interesting because it actually correlates with Dr. Ray Pete's information. So when you're dehydrated, he talks about just in a simplistic sense, the body's stores of salt will go down. You'll be actually releasing more salt into the urine. As that happens, the body actually has to produce more glucose to bring salt levels up and sugar levels up to meet energy requirements in the body, which simulates more cortisol, adrenaline, aldosterone, estrogen, prolactin, and all these things. And that's exactly what happens in the body. And Ray P. talks about this in general anatomy in regards to estrogen. So let's say you're pregnant, right? First of all, you have to be female, but let's say you're pregnant. The body has to have a natural balance of everything in the body to support the fetus. What we're seeing nowadays is people are going into this, or women are going into their pregnancies, estrogen dominant. Now, when I say estrogen dominant in this picture, what I'm talking about is not enough progesterone. And we see this because of a lot of different stressors in people's lives. And the bottom line is, a lot of the hormones that are precursors to your stress hormones are also precursors to your sexual hormones, meaning progesterone and other hormones. So the body says, hey, what's more important, survival or sex? It goes survival. So it pulls all those hormones to overproduce your stress hormones so you can actually survive, regulate blood sugar, blood pressure, all these different things in the body. And you'll see progesterone and all these, all these other hormones go down. So Ray P talks about estrogen, when the body stress and you'll see not enough progesterone and those estrogen levels rise or they're at normal and it's not being opposed, you'll actually see hypoxia of the tissues in the body. Well, at the same time you're seeing this hypoxia, he talks about the hypoxia actually lowering the oxygen availability of the tissues and this can cause blood vessels to spasm and things like that and dilate. And that's kind of what my theory on why women get menstrual cramps is because they're estrogen dominant causing blood vessels to di dilate and spasm. It decreases the amount of oxygen to the tissues and causes cramping of the abdominal muscles in the uterus and things like that. So that's kind of my theory. It might be out there. I've researched it. I haven't found anything, but that's my thoughts. So you're pregnant. Let's go back to that. The body actually needs more progesterone, progestation, or balance of progesterone to estrogen, but your progesterone starts to rise, of course, as you get go through the phase of pregnancy. But the body actually needs more glucose to support the fetus as well, as well as other hormones. I'm, I'm really simplifying it. But as the body develops, or the, I should say the fetus develops, especially the brain and the spinal cord, the, uh, the fetus actually requires more glucose from the mother. Now, let's rewind it a bit. If you go into pregnancy and you're estrogen dominant, meaning you don't have enough progesterone, you might have enough to get pregnant and starts to go up, Typically, Ray Pete says about week nine, those levels start to kind of level out just for a minute, just like a menstruation. That's why you'll typically see miscarriages around week nine because the progesterone levels start to drop a little before they rise, and that's when the miscarriage can happen. So he talks about estrogen dominant actually pulls nutrients and oxygen from the fetus in the tissues, which can suffocate the fetus and lead to miscarriages. And he talks about how any amount of estrogen right, unopposed by progesterone during pregnancy can either lead to brain, I should say, brain growth um, dysfunction, meaning small brain growth, or miscarriages at any time, more common in week nine. But he goes on to talk about how if a mother is not going into the pregnancy with enough glycogen stores in the liver, or if they can't relief and release enough glycogen stores in the liver when they need it, or if they go into it having blood sugar dysregulation, having cholesterol issues, whether it's low or high, having hormonal imbalances, whether it's high progesterone, I'm sorry, low progesterone, high estrogen, or just low progesterone, uh, high testosterone, um, high aldosterone, and high adrenaline, high cortisol, all these things can actually affect the fetus. So if you go into this having blood sugar dysregulation, 
you can actually have morning sickness, and this is how. Think about if you ever went for a workout and you really didn't eat enough, typically in the morning. Your trainer takes you through their kick-ass workout. It's not meant to be condescending. I'm just stating what I see. And what happens? The, the client themselves will get really cold. They get flush. They get sweaty and nauseous, almost like they're going to puke, just like morning sickness. Well, if there's not enough glucose for your body, your body's going to actually release tons of adrenaline, tons of cortisol, hormones like that, as well as estrogen, to actually pump blood sugar back into the body. And it does this by breaking down the tissues in the body. The problem is, this over time, if you keep doing it and not giving the body enough food, can create hypoglycemia. And that hypoglycemia is actually the feeling you're getting of morning sickness or after you work out and you get nauseous or during a workout. So at any time during the pregnancy, typically the later stages, when the body or the fetus needs more glucose, if there's not enough glucose or the body can't compensate enough by releasing enough cortisol or releasing enough adrenaline or there's not enough thyroid hormones or there's not enough, uh, you name it, anything that the body needs, what's going to happen is hypoglycemia. And the symptoms of hypoglycemia are nausea, flushing, vomiting, morning sickness. And he also t talks about seizures and eclampsia and things, things like that in regards to low blood sugar. So when it comes to morning sickness, now this is just a theory, we can't say it's always the fact, but I'm leaning towards that this is the issue. It's not regulating your blood sugar before going into pregnancy. You're not setting up a foundation for the fetus to actually be supported from, which actually will create cholesterol problems, thyroid problems, and in order for pregnancy to actually be set up, you need good amounts of T3, you need good amounts of progesterone and all these different things. So if you're actually deficient or you have blood sugar fluctuations, you're going in hypoglycemic, you're going to have cortisol, adrenaline, estrogen, prolactin, all these different hormones which actually will create problems if not miscarriage. One of those problems is morning sickness from the body becoming hypoglycemic from the fetus needing more glucose. So hopefully you've learned something. I know it's a lot to take in. The bottom line is it's not from having enough glucose stored in the body. So what do we do? The key, it's endless and there's a lot to learn. But the bottom line is go into this, I would say six months to 12 months, really eating the right foods in your diet. Really regulating your blood, your blood sugar throughout the day with three meals and maybe three snacks. Healing the different systems in the body and making sure by regulating your pulse and temp that your thyroid is actually working properly and you're producing enough cholesterol so you can produce, produce enough progesterone. Making sure that you're actually getting a good night's sleep and you're regulating adrenaline levels in the night by using specific uh, types of salt to regulate those pathways to help stimulate the metabolism in the morning when you get up. So there's a lot of different factors. Now, what do you do if you have morning sickness? There's all these different remedies. I would say try to regulate your glucose levels as much as you can by eating frequent meals, eating the right foods, snacking on fruit especially, and hopefully that will actually create a rhythm to eliminate the morning sickness. But once it's there, it's kind of like you're treating the symptom, and there's things that have created it, kind of what I've talked about. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good Thanksgiving. I'll check you later.